have the Ghana flag, please? <laughs> Madam Chairperson, colleague aspirants, Chairman, members of the Game Changer campaign team, club administrators here in Garded, the president, my chief inspirer of the Sports Writers Association of Ghana, my colleague media personnel here in Garded, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Let me begin by thanking everybody, really, really, a big thank you to everybody who have traveled far and wide to be here to attend to this all important meeting, the launch of the manifesto of the Game Changer team. We have all made this journey, of course, for a reason, to listen to the message of hope for the revival of the passion of the nation, the sport that is consumed in well over 211 countries across the world. A sport which has sunk into oblivion following the airing of the number 12 video footage. Madam Chairperson, I am deeply humbled but in my heart, I know that all of you came here with hope and believe that the Ghana Football Association with the right leadership can be what it's supposed to be. In the face of despair, you believe there is hope somewhere. In the face of football politics that has divided us for so long, you believe we can come together as one unit with a common purpose and spirit. The journey to this day started when I was 17 years old. We are here today because at the age of 17, I had a dream. The dream that will ensure that today we will all be guided to listen to the Change Game Manifesto. At the age of 17, I owned a coast football club called Shooting Stars. At the age of 17, I was the team captain. At the age of 17, I was the head coach. And at the age of 17, I was the bank roller. But I believed and believe in preparation. For me, everybody that will be successful has to fully be prepared. So at the age of 17, I started the journey to prepare myself for this day. I went to school. I went to the University of Ghana. Then I realized that there's a need for me to learn how to communicate. Through the message of my dad and my mom, I went to the Ghana Institute of Journalism to study journalism. Then I said to myself, if I develop the product that we all be yearning for, I need to know how to market this product. So what did I do? I studied marketing in London. Then I continued to dream. And I said to myself, OK, you know how to communicate. You know how to market. But you have to be modern. So I studied information technology to know, learn how to use internet, computer. Then I asked myself one basic question. People speak about an industry, football industry. What does it mean? 
I tried to find answers. Then I said to myself, there's one part of the industry that we don't speak about. Tourism, sports tourism, football tourism. So what did I do? I studied hospitality management and tourism, also in England. This is what I call preparation, to be prepared for this day. Then I said to myself, I need to learn how to manage. So I studied an MBA in football at the prestigious University of Liverpool Business School. <laughs> Having come to that level, I said to myself, let me put everything in practice. So we set up Dreams Football Club 10 years ago. And today, we know that Dreams Football Club is a force to reckon with, a brand that we are all proud of, a brand that everybody will want to be part of. Now, beyond Dreams FC, I was blessed to be elected to serve on the executive committee of the Football Association. There was one singular job that was handed over to me, and that was when we secured the sponsorship for the product called the FA Cup. I served as a member of the committee and then to be the vice. And then in 2017, I was appointed as the chairman of the MTN FA Cup. And I'm telling person, I am sure that if there's one product of the Football Association that we can all be proud of, we can all look up to, it is the MTN FA Cup. It is the only product of the Football Association that has been able to hold its sponsor, MTN, for nine years running. This is historic. This is what I call preparation, preparing myself for this day. <laughs> Mr. Chairperson, Madam Chairperson, my vision for the revival of football in Ghana is to ignite passion and create wealth for all of us. To ignite passion and create wealth for all of us. This vision is anchored on four thematic areas. With your permission, we are talking about rebuilding trust for all and restoring the image and reputation of the Ghana Football Association. <laughs> Uniting the football family behind the shared values of transparency, accountability, and the prudent management and auditing of finances. Full utilization of best practices in good corporate governance, and most importantly, the promotion of gender equity. I am sure that if today we have a lady sitting in the chair, what that tells us is that we want to give a true meaning of offering opportunities for our ladies in the game of football. Let's clap for <laughs> Today, the Ghana Football Association is at the crossroad. The industry faces its biggest challenge of insufficient investment, divisions, administrative pitfalls, and of course, wrong perceptions. However, today also presents us with a new era, a new hope, a new opportunity to change the course of history and to tread new path. A path that projects a new Ghana Football Association which embraces all the principles of good corporate governance and accountability 
and serves as an example to other sports associations in Ghana and beyond. I share Alan Kay's view that the best way to, pr to predict the future is to create it. If you want to predict the future, you have to create it. Let us start to create the future we want for our industry, starting now with the following principles. <laughs> Transparency, accountability, and annual audit. Madam Chairperson, the bedrock of my vision will be transparency, accountability, and annual audits. There's no debate in this point because too many studies have concluded that transparency and proper accountability play vital and direct roles in sound, efficiently administered institutions. Gender and equity. The word all in my vision cannot truly be accomplished without embracing the essence and the full potential of the women's game and accord its right needed attention and investment. It is my vision to plug into the FIFA vision of increasing the number of quality female football players through the development and execution of various strategies, initiatives, and promotions to bring the women's football to the mainstream. How do we create or ignite passion and create the world for all key stakeholders? Not only Dreams FC, not Fankoba, and not Proud United alone, but for all of us. Before we can do that, we need to ensure that we prepare ourselves. We lay the foundation for that big takeoff. How do we prepare ourselves? by our intention to strictly administer clear infrastructural and logistical support to our football clubs in this country. All our clubs are wobbling. All clubs, here from Karila, Eric, how many footballs do you use at training? I'm sure you, you will not want to say it. My president is here, Mohamed Gigi Alifo. How many footballs do you use at your training? I'm sure he wouldn't want to disclose it. <laughs> it must happen at the regional level. If you are not happy, travel to Accra for an appeal. Simple. So that clubs will save money. Now, we raise the players and we have to pay for the cards. Premier League, we pay 50 cities. The amateur class pay 25. We are saying we will offer this service free. The same benefits that I've listed here will go to women's football, premier level. At the tail end, I will again speak more about sources of inflow for these various policies and projects that we're rolling out. Now, Division 1, just like the Premier League, which we will push for it to be autonomous, we would also ensure that progressively the National Division 1 League management will be autonomous. <laughs> the idea is simple. If you have a project and you offer dedicated 26 hours a day services to the project, the project will never be the same. It's never like you sitting at home, ah, I live in Yenji, I have to come to committee meeting. Oh, this week I'm tired, I can't come. No, we need full-time staff to manage our most treasured commodities or properties. Management of the Premier League will be independent. Progressively, management of the D1 League will be independent. <laughs> Let me speak briefly about the Women's League or women's football, it is very clear that FIFA is very much interested in encouraging more female participation in the business of football. Currently, the general secretary of FIFA is a woman. Today, 
our chairman is a woman. Our chairperson is a woman. Again, for the same policies, we want to help upgrade the training facilities of female Premier League teams. Same benefits, we want to provide footballs, 40 footballs for the Premier League teams, there are 16, 30 pairs of football boots for all female teams in the Premier League in the country. One of the biggest challenges of women's football is payment of referee fees, which will be thin of the past. They will not pay. Most importantly, we will take steps to allow our female teams to play at approved Division I and Premier League centers. This is so important for the development of the women's game. When I started this speech, I spoke about development of the sport at the grassroots level. I want to talk about the work of the RFAs. I'm sure we have some RFA representatives here. Okay. I see. Or monthly from the Football Association. Mr. Kwabra Eboa, you would not want to know. But clearly, we should be ashamed of ourselves that if we want to produce those intangible assets to clearly dominate world football, then we are not being honest. Because there's lack of support, logistical support, financial support, at the grassroots level. What is the best IFA secretariat we have in Ghana? Maybe Cape Coast. Maybe, just maybe. Or maybe the Brown of origin. Just maybe. But colleagues, have time and visit the offices of the various football, regional football associations. It is pathetic. It is pathetic. I'm saying that it's important we place premiums on laying the solid foundation, preparing ourselves for the big takeoff. It's so important. Progressively, we would review the monthly allowances we offer to the regional football association offices. We would also roll out a policy to employ admin managers for each region. The chairman is not a full-time staff. It's only the typist who is a full-time staff. How can you administer football in such a setup? How is it possible? So we're looking at the employment of admin managers across the length and breadth of the country. We're looking at establishing fully functional district offices for every region. Most importantly, we're looking at setting up what we call game centers. What do I mean by game centers? If we want to create products that are interesting for corporate Ghana, the way we have behaved is certainly not the way to go. We we'll need or we want to identify pitches, enhance their playing surfaces, and adapt so that pitches or those pitches are the official game centers for coach football, Division 2 and Division 3. What we mean is that there will be regular congregation of teams at selected venues to play games. Naturally, the crowds will come. When the crowds come, the media, we are interested. With, from the last Congress that we had, we would bring beach soccer into the mainstream by plugging fully into the ideas and philosophy of the Big Soccer Association. Same will be done to Futsal Soccer, respectively. Let me talk about one important segment of our industry, referees. I'm sure that each one of us is interested in this particular subject area.
Integrity here is key. Before that, we want to roll out a philosophy or a policy of unearthing talents at their very, very basic level. What do I mean by this? We want to encourage young persons up to SHS level to be referees. And we call this policy the catch them young refereeing policy. <laughs> now, these referees, these juveniles, would officiate in all the cold games that were played across the length and breadth of Ghana. So clearly, you could see that we will start to develop quality referees at a much, much younger ages. This is key for the future of referees. <laughs> of course, we will then have established what we call the technical directorate. And underneath this, we will have continuous training for referees identified from the youth level up to the professional level. At the highest level, I'm talking about Premier League Division 1, we will roll out a policy for the provision of effective communication gadgets for referees at the top levels of our game, i.e. Premier League Division 1, communication gadgets. Review referee emoluments with the aim of improving their wealth. Furthermore, we will introduce reward schemes to incentivize referees, including awards for referees of the week, month, etc. Most importantly, once we reposition the product offering called Ghana Football, corporate Ghana will be interested. We will seek sponsorship to sponsor referees in this country. Madam Chairperson, I spoke about coast football and the creation of game centers. Let me give you a clearer picture. In the Ashanti region, to corporate Ghana, with this numbers we are talking about, each club playing at a different venue across the country. Clearly, we would not be clever marketers. This is what I mean by the establishment of game centers to ensure that we congregate at chosen venues, we develop products, and we are able to market our cold football to bring in the necessary revenue. Coaches, we're producing players, they have to be coached. We would ensure the establishment, Madam Chairperson must be at the same delivery level as the successful chief executive officer of a multinational company in Ghana. This is a necessity. It is clear that we have so much human resource challenges at the FA. So we need a human resource department, fully functional, of course, to ensure that we all come together and all our needs are well taken care of. Clearly, with the establishment of the Secretariat, we also need to put together key departments. Marketing and sponsorship department is key, full-time. Communications department, key, full-time. New, new media is so key to the development of our sports. Today, many organizations are raking in money from new media. As an FA, what are we doing? Even my little dreams is making money from new media. Why not the ethic? So we will set up a communications department with a clear philosophy of chasing money that can be accrued to the FA via new media platforms.
when I speak about communications, I also want to talk about our relationship with the media. Fortunately, for all the media persons here, I'm one of you. I clearly understand our needs better than almost all the aspirants. With all apologies to George. <laughs> I'm a media person. I know what our problems are. In our little corner at Dewu, we try as much as we can to make our media people comfortable. Apart from the provision of water, which is free, we offer data to our media persons who visit the theater of dreams. This will be key in going forward for football. At every Premier League Division One venue, we would offer free data for your usage. I am sure that someone will ask again, what is free data? How much is it? How are we going to take care of this? At the we spend maximum 100, 120 Ghana cents a day. Meanwhile, we have telco companies in Ghana who would be interested in this kind of relationship. So long as we reposition our product offering very well, and this is the clear intention of the new football association. Repositioning of the product is key. So long as we are able to do that at dreams, with the way we position dreams in the mindset, in the eyes of corporate Ghana, same principles and philosophy can be deployed at the football association level, where the product offering is even much stronger and bigger. There's one key partner that briefly I need to talk about before we leave. Government. Government, the great investor in football. I'm talking about our relationship with the sports ministry and its affiliate bodies. The new football association will clearly see government as a partner in development and foster the relationship best than ever. We will engage, and indeed, we will be proactive in engaging government to ensure that we stay clearly as partners. We will proactively engage government in the following areas, just to mention a few. One, to encourage district assemblies to adapt district post festivals. To help the youth employment agency make annual donations of footballs, football boots, to coast clubs in their regions. This can only happen through engagement. Most importantly, I'm sure Dela will speak to this, will be interested in this, to engage government in the provision of tax exemptions to football teams who buy football equipment from abroad. We have club owners here, and we know what we go through when we want to import football equipment. Most importantly, we are talking about VAT and the effect, the net effect it has on club finances. This is one key subject area we want to engage government in. Let me speak briefly about possible revenue streams. Madam Chairperson, currently we have what we call the FIFA Forward Program. My colleague here, George, knows about it. This is a program that has been rolled out by FIFA to offer financial support to member associations across the world. But you can only access these funds if you behave well and meet certain basic requirements. If you don't behave well, you cannot earn the money. Now, if you behave well, our federation can earn 
a minimum six million US dollars over four years. This is a statement of fact. So if we get the basics right, if we work with the quality of the staff who will be employed at the FA or who will be working at the FA, we will be able to fully assess this funding from FIFA. We will set up what we call the central fund. The central fund will be set up to support activities of course clubs, women's football, and what we call the medical fund. What will be the sources of this central fund? We talk about funding. We have planned that 10% of all net statutory payments of the FA will go into this fund. We have also planned that 10% of all net revenues accruing to the FA from Ghana's participation of, of our national team's international assignments will also go into this fund. We have also planned that 2% of monies accruing to the FA via the transfer of players will also go into this fund to be assessed by coast football, women's football, and the medical fund. And I'm telling you, as you can see, that we're talking marketing here. We are being creative. The same sources of revenue, different application of strategies to ensure that your dear game, the women's game, gets some funding. Our coast clubs get some funding. This is key. If you don't play outside the box, believe me, our industry will continue to be stale. The next fund to speak about is what we call the medical fund. We have club owners here, club executives. Their players, unfortunately, get injuries. And here we're talking about serious injuries. We're talking about injuries such as the bone, cartilage, and ligament injuries. Usually, a club will have to spend between 10,000 or 50,000 in such a situation. Usually, that could be the end of your most talented player. Now, this fund will be assessed by Premier League clubs, Division 1, and the Premier Women's Clubs to ensure that they treat players with such category of injuries. <laughs> Madam Chairperson, we would also establish what we call the Special World Cup Benefit Fund. The Special World Cup Benefit Fund. Now, when we get the basics right, and we are playing good football, we are producing good talent, good organization, I believe ultimately we will be able to again appear at the Mundial, at the World Cup. If that happens, usually there are financial benefits. What we have come to accept is that normally we have to go to that with governments. We are saying that when we go through all these processes, if we get one dollar, or two dollars, or one million, we want to share with everybody. Now, who are the bodies that will benefit from this project or this fund? The Galka, the PFAG, the Coaches Association, Referees Association, Women's Football and the Sports Writers Association for training purposes only. <laughs> so you can see that when my colleagues from the media help us to promote and to tell our story, if we go to the World Cup and there are add-ons, you will not be left out of this booty. That would ensure that you get good training. And what would that also mean? good coverage of our Premier League, Division One, Women's League, Futsal, Coast Football. Thank you.
I will conclude with a very, very simple analogy. And I'll create the indulgence of everybody here to pay attention. There was an old, rich woman. Very rich, old woman from New Ibiasi. This woman, I see he's very, very attentive. This woman had two sons. Two sons. One was educated in agriculture, Madam Chairperson, and she loved this daughter so much. And the other one was a trained doctor. This rich woman hated this daughter to the hilt. Once upon a time, this woman sat at home and was having a conversation with the one she loved most. Within the same moment, the other daughter walked through the door. And the woman was like, When ye? What ye got? My partner said, Co, 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 co. Within the same second, she had a heart attack. <coughs> that very moment, this old lady had a heart attack. Now the question is, which of the two daughters will save her life? George, Yakubu, which of them? The doctor, thank you very much. Colleagues, this is the moment, or this is the situation confronting all of us. Especially, we club owners, we delegates at the upcoming Congress. Your decision to vote should not depend on your relationship with your daughter. Your decision to vote must not be based on the fact that I hate this person. Or oh, this guy is my business partner. Your decision to vote must rely heavily on who will provide the solution to an ailing industry. In that instant case, the woman hated that daughter so much, but she had the antidote to her ailment. She was her savior, not the beloved daughter. This is what we have to take home. It's not about my, your love for Kurt, your love for George, or your hatred for Oloboy Komodo. If Oloboy can save Ghana football, vote for Oloboy. <laughs> Our industry needs Kurt. Our industry needs George. Our industry needs Pama. Our industry needs the Naya Aponsa, Amanda Clayton. George and Fred Papo. Why must we be fighting amongst ourselves? We can't afford to lose any gem in this industry. And I'm chairperson, on that note, I would want to call on my colleague, George. His team, a team of Palmer, Amanda, and Co. to join the game changing team.